Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and this is one in a series of webcasts looking at uh, BizTalk Server 2010 in the Light and Easy series. What I'm going to be focusing on is calling business rules from a .NET application. So this webcast is going to be looking at using the business rules engine from a .NET application. My name's Alan Smith. I work uh, as a developer, trainer, mentor, and evangelist at a company called Knowit Consulting, based in uh, Stockholm. We're going to be having a brief introduction uh, and looking at the need for a business rules engine in .NET applications. We're then going to be uh, looking at creating a fairly simple uh, business rules policy in the business rules composer and then calling that rules policy from .NET code and then a quick summary over uh, how we can use the uh, rules engine in .NET applications. The starting solution I'm going to be working with is fairly simple. I've basically got a class here that represents an expenses claim uh, with some uh, properties on that, that I can use to set the uh, values for the claim. I've then got a, a Windows Presentation Foundation application there where, where you can enter details. And if I run this in debug mode, what I should be able to do is enter a basic claim. So the name is going to be uh, Alan Smith. Um, the department is going to be technology, the category is going to be books, and I'm claiming this is uh, in Swedish krona, not dollars, so it's 450 crowns, and I'm going to be purchasing uh, BizTalk Server 2010 Unleashed for a call rules, uh, cloud rules proof of concept project that I'm working on, and I'm going to click on our process, and you can see that that claim was approved. If I go above uh, a certain amount, say if it costs 600 crowns for that book, and I click on process, this is going to uh, require approval. I can also change this and say I'm going to work in the sales department, I'm going to be claiming 150 crowns, but this time I'm going to be claiming for travel, and that's approved. And if we go above a certain amount uh, on travel uh, for sales, it uh, requires approval. So I do have some uh, business decision making capabilities in here. Now there's a bit of a problem uh, with this application. If we look at the way that I've implemented it, if I go down into the uh, click button for this event, what I'm doing here is creating a new expenses claim from values that are present in the user interface. And then uh, what I'm doing is programming business logic in C sharp code here. So the actual decisions I'm making is, you know, if the department is equal to technology, the category is books somewhere less than 500, then we set it to approved. Else, if uh, the department is sales, the category is travel, and the amount is less than 300, we set to approve, else uh, we set the status to uh, requires approval. Now this works, but it's a real problem uh, if I want to have complex rules, and also if those rules are going to be changing, uh, because I have to modify this, change the value here maybe to uh, 500, and then I have to uh, rebuild my application uh, to actually get that behavior to take effect. So there's a lot of uh, maintenance work that needs to take place if the business decisions change. So, what I'm going to do is to use the Business Rules Composer in BizTalk Server to actually extract uh, the business decisions from my applications and place it in uh, the Business uh, Rules Engine. Now, if you've done this in BizTalk Server, you may be fairly familiar with doing this from an orchestration, sending out a message to the Rules Engine using the call rules shape in an orchestration. But I'm going to do this directly from my Windows Presentation Foundation application. So first thing I need to do is to basically set a reference uh, to the actual .NET class I'm going to be using. You can see that uh, we typically use the uh, XML schemas if we're working with BizTalk, but as I'm working with the .NET project, I'm going to use the .NET classes. So if I go in here and I attempt to add the assembly, it should be appearing under BizTalk rules. You can see that it's not present there. Now, very familiar territory for BizTalk developers uh, is adding assemblies to the global assembly cache, and that's a requirement uh, if you're going to be using it within the rules engine. So first thing I've got to do is to go into the uh, project properties, and I'm going to uh, assign this uh, assembly with a strong name, and I'm just going to do a quick and dirty thing of generating a new strong name here. I'll call it BizTalk rules. Okay, there. just press F6 to uh, rebuild up my project. And now we've got to install it in the global assembly cache. So I'm going to start up the uh, Visual Studio command prompt. Go down to the appropriate directory. And then I can do GAC util which has quite a few command line uh, options and I'm going to use uh, minus i uh, to install and just bring in that into the global assembly cache and it says it has been uh, successfully added from the cache so I can now exit from uh, the console there and I should now be able to browse uh, from this and actually pick up uh, that DLL and we've got biztalk rules.expenses in there 
So I can OK that and you can now see that I've got uh, these various values, amount, category, department, description, name, project and status appearing in that uh, DLL. OK. So the next thing I need to do uh, is to actually start building uh, a rules policy uh, that is going to take uh, pretty much the same functionality that I've done in uh, this application here, but do it in, in a configurable way in the BizTalk rules engine. I'm going to take pretty much the same rules. So first thing I need to do is to have a policy, and I'm going to add a new policy and call it expenses approval. Now one of the things that happens uh, is I've got this else clause right down at the bottom uh, that says claim.status equals uh, requires approval. Now I want to have that firing uh, basically if any of the uh, other rules don't fire. Uh, that's going to be what the status is set to. So I'm going to add a new rule which is going to be uh, requires approval. And what I'm going to do is to put in uh, a condition here. I'm going to put in an equals predicate and I'm going to say if 1 is equal to 1 then we are going to actually set the actual status of this claim to requires approval. So what's going to happen is basically that rule will always fire um, and I'm going to have some other rules uh, that I'm going to put in and I'm going to actually use a bit later the actual uh, priorities on the rules to ensure that uh, if another rule fires it will overwrite the value uh, setting this particular status there. OK, so what I'm going to do is to go back and look at the first rule. So the department was equal to technology, category was equal to books, and the amount was less than uh, 500 crowns. I'm going to go in and encode this one up here. So let's right-click, add a new rule, and this will be um, tech approval. And what I'm going to do is to basically put in uh, the uh, and condition, this logical and condition, and then put in my actual uh, predicate. So first thing I'm going to have is an uh, equals predicate. I'm going to have uh, another equals predicate, and then I'm going to have uh, is less than a predicate. And then I can actually start to drop these, uh, these values in here. So uh, first of all we have the department being equal to tech. We had that the uh, category was equal to books. And we had that the amount was being less than 500. And what was happening then, uh, if this uh, was all true, was basically that the action was going to be the expenses claim status is equal to approved. Now what I'm going to do is to generate the one for the uh, sales uh, people. So if I basically copy the text approval and then paste this in as a new rule, this one is going to be called sales approval, and let's uh, have that in there. Now I just need to edit this, the department here is going to be equal to sales, the category was equal to travel, and I think uh, the actual value that I had here was the one that I'd modified, and I'd set that to 500 as well, so I'll leave that with uh, the, def the default there. Now that's basically my policy, however, I've got a bit of a, a problem here, in that there's no actual order for these rules firing. Uh, this uh, requires approval is always going to fire, this may fire, uh, and this may fire, dependent on the actual, uh, the actual uh, values here. But if this one does fire, uh, then this one will also fire, uh, because it will always fire. And there's a chance that uh, requires approval may overwrite uh, this value of approved. So I need to actually configure uh, the order by uh, working with the actual priorities. Now if we look at the requires approval, you can see that it has a priority of zero, as do all of these other rules. So what I'm going to look at is the actual description of what priority means. And it says priority of the rule uh, within the policy. Uh, the larger the number, the higher the priority of the rule. The default zero is zero and represents a middle priority. This is the important bit. If multiple rules are triggered, the actions of the higher priority rule will be executed first. Now this is a bit counterintuitive. You may think that um, this should be a lower priority than this because uh, this value here is going to be overwritten by this value. But it's actually the other way around. Uh, the description of the priority says that the actions of a higher priority rule will be executed first. So if I set the uh, priority of my default rule to 10, it's going to be at a higher priority than the sales approval which means that this rule will be executed first and set the status to requires approval. And then afterwards, uh, these ones with a priority zero will be executed, and they will actually overwrite the status with the value of approved. So that's going to hopefully give me uh, the behavior that I, I want there. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to actually save, and I'm going to uh, publish, and I'm going to uh, deploy this rule, so it should be present and ready to use in the rules engine. 
Okay, so what I need to do to actually call that rule from my application is first of all to add a reference uh, to the rulesengine.dll. So if I take the add reference and I'm going to browse down to the uh, program files, common files, into the uh, Microsoft BizTalk server folder. And I'm going to take the uh, Microsoft rulesengine.dll and drop on uh, a reference to that. So I can now then uh, use it from that project. So what I need to do uh, to actually use that is just to add uh, a using on here. So I'm going to be using uh, Microsoft Rules Engine, and when I get down here, I can basically copy out all of this sort of ugly code that I've written here. So I'll do a Control KC just to uh, copy out that stuff, and then uh, write in the code using the Rules Engine. So the first thing I need is an actual uh, policy. And I specify uh, the name of the policy. I can also optionally specify things like the major version and the minor version if I want to execute a specific version of the policy. But I'm just going to use uh, the name, and I'm going to copy that from uh, over here. So we're going to be using the uh, expenses approval policy. And then once I've got that policy, I can then execute the policy and we pass in uh, the various facts that we're going to be using. I can either just pass a single object or a number uh, of objects here and I can also deal with interceptors that will look in, uh, in, uh, a different, uh, in a different webcast, the tracking interceptors. But I'm just going to pass in the claim and that's going to be it. Just a couple of lines of code there to actually execute that rules policy. Okay, so I've replaced all of that big ugly uh, business logic with just two lines of code to create a new policy and make that call. And what I'm going to do is to just to run this and uh, see if it works correctly. So if I select that the department is technology and the category is equal to books, click on process, you can see that that was uh, approved. If I change this value to uh, 650 and click on process, we now uh, require approval. If I go to the sales and uh, set their department to travel and the value is 650, that still requires approval. However, if I change this to uh, 350, you can see that that is being approved. So the big advantage I get with this solution uh, is that without all of this uh, business logic code here, and actually delete this because uh, we're not using it anymore, I've now got a very, very simple uh, application here. We take in the expenses claim, we fire it off to the rules engine, the rules engine is going to evaluate the decision, and here we get back the actual status in my Windows application. That means that this stuff here uh, can change without affecting my application. Just to show how that works, I'm going to uh, run my application here, and I'm going to go in here and select that we're going to be technology, uh, we're going to have the category as, uh, as books, and I want to buy a book that costs 750 crowns, and click on uh, OK there, process, and you can see that that requires approval. Now, I'm not happy with that. What I'm going to go do in, uh, I'm going to actually leave the application running, uh, so I don't even need to restart this application, and I'm going to go into the Rules Composer, I'm going to copy uh, this policy, paste a new policy version, and that allows me to go in and make changes to this. So uh, for the tech approval, I'm going to say that, well, we'll go up to 1,000 crowns uh, for books, and with the actual sales approval, to keep the budgets balanced, we'll reduce their travel to 250 crowns. Here, now I can actually save and then I can uh, publish and then I can uh, deploy this rule. So it's now the active one in the rules engine. And if I go back here and click on process, it's still actually saying it uh, requires approval here. Now the Rules Engine Update Service has a default of 60 seconds on its update. We can change this uh, by changing a registry setting, which I'll show at the, uh, at the end of the webcast. But we should notice after a certain amount of time, uh, the actual new rule will kick in. And this will say approved when I do the processing. And you can see now uh, that the new rule has come in, and that's now saying approved. Just to check the other one, if I go on to sales and uh, select the category as uh, travel, I'll actually change the description to taxi, and we'll put in uh, 300 for the taxi, and that one uh, requires approval there. Now that default uh, of 60 seconds uh, may be for some production scenarios, and if you're doing uh, debugging, uh, maybe you want to change that. So I'll just show you how to do that. If I go uh, run uh, regedit, I'm going to go into H key local machine, software, Microsoft, and find business rules. And in the 3.0, we've actually got uh, this polling interval, uh, which is set by default to 60 seconds. So if I go in and modify this, 
if I change this decimal value to 10, I should now have the rules updating much, uh, much, much faster. So that's going to be a good thing to do in a development environment if you're doing lots of uh, actual uh, testing of these uh, these rules just to change that particular value. You will actually need uh, to do a restart of the REU service, so I'll just show you how to do that. And to get that new caching interval, I do need to go into the rules engine update service, which is this one here, and just do a restart on that. So that will pick up the uh, the uh, 10 second change there, and it should give me uh, more response uh, when I'm uh, doing this. Okay, to summarise, uh, what I was doing in this webcast was basically taking some ugly uh, business logic, uh, and I was replacing it uh, with just two lines making a call out to the rules engine. I was also using a C sharp class to pass uh, to the uh, rules engine, uh, which uh, works uh, seems to work very well. Instead of using a message uh, from BizTalk Server, an XML message, and then I'm basically creating a very very simple uh, business rule just to actually uh, test this. Now, one of the things that I'm not doing is creating a vocabulary. I wanted to keep the webcast as simple as possible and I could have you know changed the names with more uh, human friendly names by using a vocabulary but I kind of think that you know the, these are okay uh, for my particular scenario that I'm working with so I skipped that one out just to keep uh, the webcast a bit more simple. So to summarize this, uh, BizTalk server ships with uh, a powerful uh, business uh, rules engine and the use of that BRE uh, is not really limited to BizTalk Server at all. You can use it from really any uh, .NET application. You can even uh, expose uh, the rules as services and use them from uh, any uh, application that can consume web services. And we'll look at that in uh, later webcasts. Calling the business rules from .NET projects is very, very simple. Uh, you've seen how I can just generate a very, very basic entity class and then just pass that into the actual business rules engine just using a couple of lines of code. Now it's not free, uh, you do need a license for it, so the cheapest way probably to do this is to go for BizTalk Server Standard Edition license and be able to actually have that installed for the actual uh, rules engine. This uh, webcast was in a, one in a series of webcasts hosted at cloudcasts.net in the BizTalk 2010 Light and Easy webcast series.